Hey guys, uh, welcome back. So today we are going to see Terraform advanced scenario based questions. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so the first question is like uh, we have two developers. Okay, so they run Terraform apply on the same module at same time. So what happens and how do you prevent the state corruption? Okay, so when two developers apply Terraform apply at the same time, the first one who applies, okay, will acquire the state lock and they will proceed with the next steps uh, which is going to happen, okay. The one who applied second, it will uh, fail with the lock error, okay. For example, you will see an error like error occurring the state lock, okay. So how do you prevent and uh, what exactly is happening here? So actually they might be using some remote backend with state locking, okay, like AWS S3 plus uh, DynamoDB or else in case if they are using like Terraform Cloud or Enterprise or else Terraform Console uh, they can use, okay, like uh, ASICOP uh, Console so that uh, they will be able to do the backend uh, locking, okay. So this is a main uh, good practice because uh, in case if uh, there is no state locking and if multiple uh, um, developers or someone uh, commits the changes, then actually there will be like a Terraform state file corruption. Okay. So in order to avoid that one, in order to avoid that one, actually we have to enable the state locking. Okay. So using these things, we will be able to uh, apply the state locking to the Terraform files. Okay. So the next question is. Changing the AMI ID, okay, uh, Amazon uh, machine image ID in a launch template, okay. So, for example, you have a launch template and uh, you are changing the AMI ID, okay. So, which forces the auto scaling group to recreate, so okay. So, how do you achieve zero downtime, okay? Because in case if you are making some changes and if it is going to recreate, obviously, like uh, there may be some downtime, okay. So, in case if you want to avoid that one, so what we can do okay so the goal is to update the auto scaling group to use the new ami okay so we are changing this ami id so we are going to use the new new ami so how to avoid the downtime so one thing is like create before destroy okay so when you give create before destroy so it will try to create the new instance with the new ami id before it deletes the old one okay so what will happen the old one will be there and it will start serving the traffic meanwhile you can delete the uh, old one okay so this tag in the life cycle like create before destroy equal to true uh, it will uh, make sure that uh, there is uh, no downtime otherwise uh, like uh, we can uh, ignore the launch template uh, version drift okay so in the life cycle you can just uh, give ignore changes to the latest version okay so that uh, whatever changes it is done it will be ignored and uh, it will be applied okay so that uh, you will be able to make sure that uh, there is no downtime Okay, so ASG updates to its uh, latest template often trigger replacement and create before destroy ensures no new instances are uh, launched and uh, becomes healthy before old instances are terminated. Okay, and then next one Terraform wants to recreate an entire RDS uh, instance. Okay, so it wants to recreate entire RDS instance due to a minor parameter change. Okay, there is some minor parameter change and it wants to recreate uh, the entire RDS database. Okay. But you must avoid downtime. What do you do? Okay. So what is the solution? So ignore specific parameter changes at the DB level instance. Okay. So again, we have to use the life cycle. So whenever there is a question, okay, like uh, there should not be any downtime, obviously like you have to use life cycle. Okay. Life cycle is the one which connects to the downtime. Okay. So in the life cycle, you can ignore changes and you can define parameter group change. For example, if there are some changes in the parameter, you can ignore those changes, okay? So that you will not see any downtime, okay? Or move configurations into separate DB parameter group and update that instead of instance resources, okay? So otherwise, like we can move it into a different uh, DB parameter group. So that also we will be able to avoid uh, the downtime on the RDS instance, okay? So after Terraform import, okay, of an EC2 instance, every plan, okay, every plan shows changes even though aws hasn't changed okay so why it will be showing like that okay what is every plan plan means terraform plan okay whenever you do terraform plan it will show like what are all the new changes it is going to be applied uh, based on that terraform file right so after the terraform import of ec2 instance this shows like it has changed so what is the reason okay so terraform import synchronizes state only okay so we will have the state file right it will synchronize the state file only not the actual code okay terraform code which you have written those things it will not be synced only the terraform state file will be synced okay so what you have to do you have to make sure like uh, your resource block does not exactly match the uh, resource 
attributes okay so whether uh, your uh, resource uh, block uh, exactly it matches or not you have to check that one okay so first one is like you have to do terraform show then you have to inspect the module resource attributes and then update the terraform resource block okay so you have to update it with the correct value which is uh, required okay otherwise in uh, just because you did terraform import it will just uh, import the state file not the actual code so you have to update the code as well okay so that uh, when you op when you update that one next time when you do terraform plan it will show correctly okay otherwise it will keep on uh, showing the same thing okay whenever uh, you do terraform import it will import the only the state file okay okay so the next one is terraform marks a resource as tainted okay and keeps recreating it on every apply okay so whenever you mark a resource as tainted when you do the terraform apply next time it will automatically delete that resource and it will try to recreate okay that is what tainted means okay so how do you fix and how do you find and fix the cost okay so how to inspect so in case if you want to inspect you have to do terraform state show okay and then you have to give the resource address which gets recreating each and every time okay so terraform state show and common reasons like drift the resource was changed manually in the cloud for example if it is changed somewhere in the cloud and if it is like a different year then it may be tainted and it may be recreating each and every time or missing attributes in the code that uh, terraform infers has changed in case if you have missed something or uh, something then actually it will uh, consider it as missed and it will try to reapply the change and uh, provider bug in case if there is any of the issue from any of the providers then also this may happen okay and uh, a field is computed and changes on every refresh uh, for example if there is some change which uh, changes each and every time during the refresh then also it will uh, happen okay in order to avoid this one like you can do terraform apply and you can pass in the parameter like iphone replace and then the exact resource which is getting changed okay you can pass in that one okay so that the latest changes which is uh, there that will be taken and uh, this uh, recreate it will be ignored okay so you can just give terraform apply replace and then you can just pass in that resource uh, details okay okay the next one one module deploys vpc for dev okay one module deploys vpc for dev stage and prod dev stage uses two subnets okay dev and stage uses two subnets and prod uses six so how do you design the module okay here we have a module which deploys vpc into different uh, environments like dev stage and prod and dev and stage uses two subnets and prod uses six, six subnets so how we can design okay so it is like the goal is to reuse a single module with a different number of subnets okay so what is the solution so we can use for each okay for each with a map and avoid count okay why we cannot use count because it is order sensitive and can cause recreation like it will it can try to recreate multiple times uh, in case if we define count okay so the best one is like to use uh, for each okay so we can define variable as subnet and you can give map list string and we can use for each okay when you use for each it will create the in required number of subnets okay so try to avoid this count because uh, it will not create the resources uh, properly in an order okay so you want to deploy the same infra across 10 aws accounts okay from one code base so how do you design it so this is one of the important questions guys so in case if you want to deploy it across uh, multiple uh, regions like uh, how you do it uh, across multiple accounts so you have to define multiple aws providers with aliases okay so in case if you see aliases account one alias account two okay and also region okay ap south one and region eu west one so based on this you can define uh, different accounts and uh, on which uh, region it has to be defined so you have to define those things as well and when you want to deploy it in multiple regions like you can just use the module and in the providers you can see like aws equal to aws dot account one so aws dot account one and next time in case if you want to deploy it here you can use aws dot account two okay similarly when you use like this you will be able to deploy the same uh, thing across uh, different uh, aws accounts okay so this is also like uh, very important so the next one is like terraform plan is slow okay like you are doing terraform plan it, uh, in case if it is very less code and less resources it is fine let's assume you have hundreds of resources and when you do terraform plan obviously it has to show you like what are the resources it's going to create right so it is slow because it requires thousands of resources so how do you optimize the performance 
so what we can do so like uh, we can use life cycle ignore changes for attributes that doesn't uh, require uh, any drift detection okay in case if uh, there are some resources which uh, doesn't care about drift detection you can use life cycle ignore changes and also use data source only when it is required okay why it is the use of data source it is for getting any of the resource uh, configurations okay so in case if you use uh, data sources only when it is required uh, like it will avoid uh, over using it okay and also split the configurations into multiple root modules or uh, state files so for example if you have like different resources for example networking database apps etc we have to separate uh, the things for each and everything okay and also use uh, remote state uh, data sources okay for uh, shared outputs these data sources are like uh, for sharing the output of uh, one resources into other okay so this will be useful for that one and optionally use teragrant okay in case if uh, you have the option you can use teragrant okay so that uh, the data from plan will be uh, faster okay because it will orchestrate uh, into it into multiple stacks so that it will be fast okay okay the next question is a sensitive variable like password accidentally got committed to git okay so you pushed uh, yeah, some passwords into git okay how do you prevent this in future okay so what you can use in case if you have any things like uh, passwords we can use sensitive equal to true okay so what exactly it will do whenever you try to push uh, the code with uh, uh, sensitive equal to true it will just uh, cancel the push okay so it will throw an error and you will get to know like uh, there is a password or something okay and uh, the best practice to prevent the future leaks is add uh, terraform.tf words okay and also like any secret files to dot ignore okay when you do it uh, when you add it to dot git ignore it will ignore during the git pushes okay and use pre-commit uh, hooks to block uh, committing secrets okay so you can use some pre-committed uh, hooks so that uh, the secrets will not be committed otherwise like uh, we can use uh, some uh, secret managers like uh, ashika vault or aws system parameter or aws secret manager okay so that we will be able to avoid the passwords being committed into git repos okay so the next question is like terraform wants to recreate an application load balancer every time because aws injects default tags okay so uh, you have certain resource and whenever you try to uh, apply that one application load balancer it is getting uh, recreated okay because aws injects some default tags so how to stop that one so as i told earlier whenever you want to stop downtime or uh, Re uh, avoid uh, recreating or something most of the times you will be using lifecycle okay so what exactly is the problem like aws adds or modifies the default tags okay so the solution is ignore provider or aws managed tags in case if some tags are coming from aws then we can ignore it okay so how to ignore in the lifecycle we can just define ignore changes and what exactly we have to ignore here we have to ignore the tags so in this one of the previous questions we have seen we have to ignore the parameters right so similarly like whenever you have to ignore any of the resources you have to just uh, define those things okay so in the life cycle you have to just ignore changes and parameter groups or else in here we are just ignoring the tags okay so when you uh, ignore these tags the default tags which are created by aws it will be ignored okay so this pattern is common for all uh, eks alb ec2 s3 so like whichever resource you create and if there are some default tags in order to avoid that one you can use the life cycle tag and you can just ignore the changes okay if you want to share output okay from one terraform project into another okay because let's assume like we have some load balancer ip or uh, s3 buckets or whatever it is so in case if you are creating it and uh, if you want to share that to the another uh, project so how do you do it okay so the solution is remote state data source this is the thing which we discussed earlier if you see here remote state data source so what exactly it will do so here your configuring the data section okay and you are giving the name as terraform remote state and you are giving the vpc and backend is s3 and config so bucket is tf state key and then region okay so you can consume it so in case if you need the vpc id so you can give vpc id equal to data okay data dot terraform okay this is the terraform file right so this is the terraform remote state so you want first you have to give data and then dot and then you have to pass in the next thing okay so you have passed in the next thing then we have to give the vpc so we have passed the vpc and then we have to get the output okay so that outputs we have to pass in dot vpc id so in case if you want to get that one you can uh, just when you check the terraform configurations uh, you will get to know the terraform documentation will have like how to get this one so you can use the terraform documentation and you can get okay so but in case if you have to get something first it should start with whatever the 
thing it is there for example here data and then the name and then which uh, type like uh, which resource vpc and then inside vpc like uh, whatever we want to get we will get that one okay so the next question is terraform destroy is stuck okay so you are trying to destroy the entire resources but it is stuck because rds requires a final snapshot so this database it is having some requiring some final snapshot so in case if you want to destroy it is getting stuck because uh, it was not able to delete because of that step okay so how do you handle this okay so skip final snapshot okay so we can skip the final snapshot like skip underscore final snapshot equal to true okay or you can explicitly create a final snapshot okay so final snapshot final snapshot identifier equal to backup before destroy okay so before destroy we have to backup so once that backup is done it will uh, delete otherwise like uh, we can just give it as skip uh, final snapshot equal to true okay so that uh, when you execute terraform uh, destroy the resources it will be deleted okay so the next one is Terraform keeps recreating an S3 bucket because AWS changes ACL ownership defaults. Okay, so like AWS is making some changes because of that the S3 bucket it's uh, keep on recreating. Okay, so how do you stabilize it? Okay, so AWS S3 object ownerships and SL features can auto adjust settings. Okay, so these things like it will be automatically changing whenever there changes there are changes from the AWS end. Okay, so this will cause the drift. So, so how we can ignore these fields? So again, we have to use lifecycle. Okay, under lifecycle, we can ignore changes. Okay, what are the changes we can ignore? We can ignore changes related to ACL, grant, and object ownership. Okay, so when we change, when we ignore these things, so the S3 bucket it will stop recreating and it will use already existing one. So whatever uh, the new changes are uh, defined to this ACL or uh, uh, and the object owner permissions those things will be ignored okay so this is like a very common after uh, aws introduced this uh, s3 object ownership defaults okay so because of this like uh, automatically there will be changes so in case if you want to ignore this one just you have to use the life cycle and ignore changes okay so the next question is like terraform cannot delete a resource because it is still attached example like ani iam roles so how do you resolve uh, cyclic dependencies so this is like uh, similar to the abo question okay so here uh, it was not able to uh, delete because uh, rds is uh, about to take the final snapshot so here uh, it is still having some iam roles and dni is attached because of that uh, it is not able to delete uh, the resources okay so how you can fix this one so use explicit depends on okay so when you use explicitly depends on to control the order so for example you can define depends on and AWS IAM role policy and AWS security group. So you can define like a particular resource is dependent on another resource so that uh, it will uh, come in in order. So when you give this uh, depends on first it will try to create the resource which is required then it will create the next resource okay so that uh, it will uh, resolve this cyclic dependency okay and also if necessary we can split the tear down into multiple places okay first detach or delete the dependency resources then destroy the primary resource okay so even if we configure it like a separate uh, functions are based on the places then also we can do otherwise like uh, like we have to explicitly de uh, define depends on okay so the next one is like uh, you have 10 environment folders like uh, dev prod staging etc with high code duplications so because like uh, most of the resources will be common across everything so we have uh, much uh, high code duplications okay so how do you make it dry okay so so the best solution is to use uh, Terragrant, okay? So example layout like we can use uh, live dev network Terragrant.sl and live prod network telegram to sell or we can define modules network and main.tf so telegram will help in uh, remote state configuration state locking backend configuration reuse and also with environment variables and a dry uh, hierarchical structure for multiple environments so like what exactly is uh, dry it is like uh, don't repeat yourself like uh, don't use the code uh, repeatedly multiple times so this will uh, take care like telegram will take care of all this repeated uh, uh, repeated uh, codes and it will try to fix these things okay so these are all the main questions guys when it comes to scenario based questions uh, just uh, go through once more and in case if you like the video please like and subscribe to the channel okay thank you bye